Hi. Today I'd like to talk about uh, annular tears of the disc, uh, in particular to the lumbar spine, but it could happen anywhere in the uh, spine in general. So what is an annular tear? What are we really talking about uh, for this? And it's very important to understand that the disc acts as a cushion of sorts between the vertebrae. So here's a vertebrae and a vertebrae, and then between it is a soft disc. The disc is essentially composed of two components. One is a soft center. I know people talk about it like a liquid center, but certainly in the adults this is, this is not the case. It's like a soft, almost like a shrimp type of meat uh, more than anything else. On the outside, the outer maybe two-thirds of this is the annulus, and the annulus is a very thick, fibrous uh, type of tissue that's uh, complex. It's like a radial tire wrapping around the liquid center. And I don't know if you can get a sense of this. This is a pretty good model. It's got a clear uh, type of uh, uh, covering here. And you can get a sense. So the look at like the blue part is, the, is the, the disc, the soft center. And the white that surrounds it on the periphery here is the actual annulus. And the uh, uh, annulus acts as a cushion but uh, with, it also acts to resist uh, some of the torsional forces that come across. So when we twist or turn our back, uh, these are resisted by the thick tissues of the annulus in addition to the bumper stops of the facet joints. So when twisting is done, you actually have some bony stops, but also the uh, annulus the, attached to the, the bone here uh, will also help to restrain excessive twisting motion. The problem is that this tissue, very thick as it is, uh, and a good restraining tissue, has a very poor blood supply, almost none to the inner third of it, uh, which really renders healing very, very difficult. So, it's, so the problems are the, this annulus is under a lot of stress and strain, motion almost constantly as we're always moving our back. And yet the repair process or the repair ability is very poor because it has a relatively poor blood supply, particularly as you get further inside of the annulus toward the center, toward the nucleus. And how does this all really line up in terms of reality? Well, oddly enough, just because you may have an annular tear, it doesn't mean you're going to have pain. They've done several studies. Uh, uh, they've done studies in the cervical and the lumbar spine, which shows that as much as 30% of the people without symptoms will have an annular tear on an MRI scan. So just because you have one doesn't mean it hurts. Uh, but if you do have one, it certainly can hurt. So how do we actually talk about tears of the annulus? Well, uh, I'll be showing you a couple pictures. And, but the tearing occurs from the inside out. So the tearing would start, say this is the center of the, uh, the nucleus, and then we're going to extend a tear out peripherally, out to the periphery, out to the back. And there's uh, patterns that have been well described by a Dallas classification system, which kind of grades them in terms of severity. And of course, the severity means that how complete it is or how far out it goes, and actually then how far uh, wide it is, whether it's very small little crack or a fissure, or if it's fairly wide enough so that nuclear material can get out. And really what the thing to learn about annular tears are it's necessary to have an annular tear for a disc protrusion or a disc herniation. In other words, there's got to be a way for the disc material in the center of the disc to migrate out to the edge where it becomes symptomatic and sitting on top of a nerve <clears throat> or a spinal cord that actually uh, uh, can uh, you know, demonstrate symptoms for you. If you have persistent back pain or persistent recurrent back pain that occurs and just keeps on recurring, it's a very good possibility that it as a result of an annular tear. And what is it that the pain is really coming from? Well, there's probably four main reasons that the pain is occurring from an annular tear. Number one we've talked about briefly, and that is the poor blood supply that occurs. The back is under continuous stress, motion, uh, the fibers are thick, the forces are tremendous that occur across the lumbar spine, and the uh, healing ability is very compromised because of the poor blood supply to this very thick tissue. Number two, if disc material wedges inside of the tear, in other words, the, say the disc material starts to herniate out the tear, 
and it gets stuck between, well then there's no possibility that the annular fibers can actually oppose themselves for the purpose of healing. Even if the blood supply is adequate, you've got dysfragment that sits between the edges, it, it's not going to be able to uh, get together and heal. Third cause is actually one of a chemical nature and the uh, chemical breakdown inside the nucleus can actually escape through a small, can be a very small radial tear and escape out to the periphery. And these uh, chemicals can be very irritating to the nerve supply uh, in the outer portion of the annulus. And these sinovertebral nerves can be very sensitive to the chemical. As a matter of fact, uh, it is possible to even experience back and leg pain without any disc herniation with an annular tear, probably as a result of the chemical irritating uh, the nerves uh, that are going down to innervate your legs or buttocks. So again, you can have radicular or extremity pain even without a formal disc herniation, just as a result of the irritating chemicals leaking out of the center of the disc through a annular tear. And number four, tearing occurs from inside out. The healing occurs from outside in because of the improved blood supply as you go further out. In other words, as you go from inside, poor blood supply, outside, better blood supply. So the better blood supply is on the outside of the annulus. And when this starts to heal, the healing occurs from the outside in. Well, accompanying the little uh, vascular tissue or the blood supply tissue that tries to heal in is also some nerve tissue. If this nerve tissue starts to follow the uh, new healing, uh, the blood supply in, uh, you can get extra sensitivity because you've actually got nerves growing from the inside out that the annulus never even had before. So that really is the uh, fourth cause of annular pain. Uh, just to review on how you know you've got an annular tear, uh, the MRI scan is a pretty good uh, screening device. It's not the gold standard, but uh, certainly things terms like a HIZ or high intensity zone uh, refers to edema uh, of you know, of the annulus, and uh, there's also some other uh, descriptive terms. But if you have an annular tear, MRI does a fairly good job of uh, revealing it. But the gold standard is a, a CT discogram, and by that I mean that if you have a, uh, the disc, and uh, we put a needle in here inside of the disc space and inject some contrast or some dye and put some, you know, just put a little pressure in there and then remove it then send you over to a CT scanner. The scanner will actually give you a, a two-dimensional picture uh, of the disc and it can show the dye pattern where the dye is either contained or leaking out and it is considered the gold standard for determining you know how large the uh, tearing is and, and where the tear is located. So CT discogram is the uh, really the gold standard uh, for determining an annular tear. What do you do with these? Well really time is on your side and uh, I think that oftentimes it can take 18 to 24 months to heal an annular tear. So uh, the first thing that probably is recommended is to do nothing or to do something that's very mild. I mean exercises, uh, physical therapy, uh, some type of uh, uh, distraction of the spine uh, would be a possibility, uh, some injections, anything to buy yourself some time, just stay comfortable enough uh, to give yourself some time because 18 to 24 months is a long time it'll try your patience for sure but doing nothing at least allows it to heal by itself of which probably the majority uh, will do. Uh, second possibility is a, uh, is a biochemical injection. Now, this was described back in the early 2000s uh, by some uh, actually prolotherapy specialists and a biochemical injection could be contemplated uh, the exact reason it works, and it works about 55% of the time, so, but it's not bad for a simple injection as an outpatient uh, that could be performed uh, uh, without, just really without too much um, uh, risk. The timing afterward, after about, it takes about six weeks before the soreness in your back heals or settles down, and you can tell at that point whether the injection was successful. So pretty low uh, risks and, uh, you know, not 50%. Uh, you know, back pain relief from a little chemical, biochemical injection, uh, not, too, not too bad. Uh, number three, an endoscopic discectomy. 
I think that offers the possibility of removing any disc fragments that might be wedged in an annular uh, uh, tear. Uh, also it allows uh, you know, putting a hole in the disc so if there's pressure that's building up either from chemical pressure uh, or uh, just from the fragmenting uh, pressure that this pressure can be relieved by you know, essentially poking a hole uh, with a, you know, something like this just by putting it inside the disc and removing some of the fragmentation can allow the removal uh, of these fragments and uh, de decrease in the pain. Uh, certainly back pain is not the greatest indication. It probably will relieve the back pain 60 to 65 percent of the time. Uh, but it works better if you have a uh, leg or uh, back, you know, leg pain or buttock pain, foot pain that accompanies it uh, as the primary reason for doing that. So when pain, people say, Jesus, my back goes in and out, it's very possible it's a disc fragment that's moving in and out of an annular tear. And endoscopic discectomy might be an appropriate thing to try. Uh, the last uh, set of options I think to be, consider for this is to do a, a disc replacement or a fusion. Uh, these type of uh, procedures are very extensive. Uh, there's no reversing them, and so uh, I think that you really want to think carefully before moving on to that final uh, definitive step, but that's certainly uh, option number four. So in my final co comments are go slow. Time is on your side, uh, and uh, uh, if you've got any further questions about uh, annular tears, uh, be sure to visit me at uh, DrTonyMark.com. Thank you very much.